Hello, hello, and welcome to the Fire Tuna Club. It's Kat speaking. I'm bringing back another one-of-a-kind custom doll today. Um, and really, there's not much to say about it, except let's just dive right in and see the process of my first transformation doll, as opposed to a Monster High creative monster doll. So, in order to create my original character, Ivory, I started out with a Tora Lai Sarah Screams Freaky Fusion doll. If you're familiar with custom doll videos, the first steps I took were to cut off the hair, can you see the hesitation? Dunk the head in hot water to remove it and then take pliers to pull out all the gluey plugged hair. Now my hair in this one was not glued so you don't really get to see the gunk. And I also used a flathead screwdriver to make it easier for myself because of there being no glue to grab onto. So after I survived my first custom doll haircut, I start with the next process of taking acetone and taking off the factory paint, which by this time was the third one, so I wasn't quite as traumatized on this part of the project. Now that I've turned this freaky fusion doll into a blank, I can work on making her ivory. The first steps I took after getting the body prepped was to cover the head in saran wrap just to make sure none of the polymer clay um, residue get, that is left behind didn't actually stick to the head because I didn't want to have to keep washing it every time I did something. And then I went about shaping the polymer clay horns. Mind you, this is the first time I did this and I learned a lot from it. Like I could have used some armature wire to help me out when I was baking because it inevitably deformed before it could set. And to also have actually put in armature wires and not been so scared to drill into the polymer clay that I could have more stably put it on the head. As you can see, I used an epoxy resin to do that. It's not pretty, but because I knew what hairstyle I was going to make around the horns, I wasn't as concerned about the epoxy resin being visible. As I mentioned before, anything that was filmed during December and January, partially because I was sick and partially because I was trying out new stuff, had iffy filming. My computer decided to crash, and at the time, I was only recording with my webcam. Which means, unfortunately, I'm missing part of the footage, but... I sprayed down the blank face after I got the horns put on with some of my sealant. I use Tester's Dull Coat, which works great for me. Some people use MSC. In fact, most people use MSC. Use what you like best.
I stopped about halfway through the base up because I realized that while I knew what I wanted to do with the face, I couldn't finish it until I had the horns looking how I wanted it to. All of this was meant to play together. So I stopped at the face up and I went ahead and started painting the horns to make sure that the whole idea was cohesive. Knowing that black goes on much quicker than lighter colors, I started with yellow and then painted over it with black and then proceeded to paint over all of that with a metallic gold sheen to achieve the look I wanted. Once I completed that, I finished the face up and covered the eyes, lips, and horns with a Liquitex gloss. Then I proceeded to the longest part of the project that took me over three hours on just this one part. So there is going to be a lot cut out that you don't see. But if you want to learn how to make your own wings, check out Akimeru Kawaii. I'm, I really am sorry if I say that wrong. The link will be provided in the description box below. I'm still developing preferences on glues, so you can see that about five or six feathers in, I was getting too frustrated to keep going with the tacky glue and whipped out the hot glue gun, which worked out so much better, and I only finished off with the tacky glue at the end to make the downy, fluffy part of the top of the wings. I would also suggest be ready with the vacuum cleaner or be prepared to inhale feathers using this process. And I also kept a handy dandy apple white close to me for reference so that I didn't overdo it on the wings. You know what they say, hindsight is 2020. When I was working on the feathers, I was more interested in the way they were curving towards or away from the body than the direction they were curving. So I had a problem when the wings were finally done, which was easily corrected with a flat iron. This won't work with all feathers, so keep in mind what kind of feather you're using when you try to whip out the flat iron and heat them into a new direction. When I finished with the face up, I decided to actually work with the polymer clay accessories that I also wanted to add to her. I flattened out clay to a thickness that I like, and I used a stir stick for the whip, and I cut out a bunch of pieces. I made more than I needed so that I could pick ones that I liked best. And I proceeded to go ahead and make her some shackles. I didn't have any ready-made that were from actual dolls because I didn't see them at the right thickness. Following along with the fact that she's an imprisoned fallen angel, I began to add chains upon chains upon chains anywhere I could. And since the wings didn't attach any other way, I figured that that was a great way to add the wings to her person and just have the chains not only drape on the wings, but holding the wings onto her body, which fit the image. Now, if you don't already do this, do consider saving your old jewelry that you either lost the other half to, or it's so tarnished now you don't really want to use it. Because I turned a fantastic set of earrings, well, actually earring, into her halo. Now, I still don't have an overall preference between straight onto a doll head or a wig or rebooting, but for this project, I knew what hairstyle I wanted. I needed to glue directly to the head. And yes, I am still not a fan of hot glue for making hairstyles, but I am learning there is a time and place for it. <laughs> so now that all the accessories are baked and ready to be painted. I go through the final polishing and also adding a few more accessories that I hadn't foreseen at the time, namely being the lock that will hold all the chains together on her still bound wing. And you can see that I bake it and get it how I want it. I scuff it a little bit so it looks like she's been clawing at it trying to get free. And on top of that, I do the consistent paint of black and a silver sheen on top so that the metal looks aged. Don't forget to be smart about your power tools. I actually almost drilled through my finger on another part that I did not show. That is why I'm using pliers when I drill into the lock. Oh, 
almost forgot to add the eyelashes at the end, but in going with my admit to my learning as I go streak, I glued them on too low so it was covering her eyes. I used a clay tool with the curve I wanted, heated it up with my flat iron, and then proceeded to try to melt the eyelashes up a little bit. I see you there. Why are you here? Have you come for my halo? Ha. Huh. This meaning the thing was given to me. But it's cracked now. If you want it so badly, you can have it. Go fetch. Fool. Hi guys, if you like what you saw and you want to see more, don't forget to like or subscribe to the channel. If you want to see what we're working on before we get it out, check out the sneak peeks on Instagram or just follow us on Tumblr. Thanks for watching.